just in general, as this 2024 season kicks off, uh, thoughts either on or off the field, big picture or smaller picture in terms of what what is uh, you know what is tickling your fancy out there? Well, the big one, you know, don't bury the lead, is Lionel Messi's first full season now with Inter Miami. He came midseason last year. Miami won the uh, League's Cup, and then you know they came. He came in at a point where they were basically dead last in the Eastern Conference, couldn't do enough to get into the playoffs and make kind of a wonder run there. So I'm fascinated to see now that you've got Messi, Busquets, Jordi Alba, Luis Suarez, a beautiful heel that will be joining the fold. So I'm, I'm interested there. And then, look, there's a lot going on on the field and off the field with Major League Soccer. I know we're going to get to this. There's the backdrop of the referees. You've got now, for the first time in a long time, no new expansion team this year. So St. Louis came in last year. San Diego will join next year. But I think now the first real time we're going to see some of these teams have had a couple years in the league building rosters. What can they do? LAFC, is Carlos Vela going to be back or not? They've got a whole new look team once again. They're going to have the pressure. I think it's it's ultimately going to be a lot of the teams we've seen over the past couple of years. Front and center once again with Seattle, Cincinnati now, trying to go one step further than the Supporters' Shield. So there's a lot of different storylines in there, but Messi is the, the big one there and I think is going to really grip the attention of people from outside, the normal MLS fan. Do you think that Messi, uh, or that MLS leaning into Messi, which I think any business, given the asset that he is and the value that he brings, would do so. Do you think that it's it's being too Messi dependent in that all of these eggs are in this Messi basket? And I guess, do you do you blame them or do you think that there is a danger? This question is to both of you. Yeah, do you want to start, Masi? I do wonder about the Argentina factor. I understand why folks in MLS like the fact that he still plays for Argentina. I think that adds even more gloss to him coming here. But I do wonder if there's a chance that Inter Miami becomes an afterthought for him. Uh, you know, we all thought that winning the World Cup might be the sort of drop the mic moment. But instead, what we've come to realize is that after all that tension and all that pressure all those years that surrounded his participation with Argentina. He's reveling in being able to play with Argentina without any more monkeys to get off his back, having checked off all the boxes. And so he's really looking to play as often as he can for them. The fact that we're even discussing the Olympics is amazing to me. The guy's going to be 37 years old. He's already won a gold medal. He's already playing in the Copa America. Does he need to play in another summer tournament and be away from Inter Miami for more than two months? But it sounds like it's a distinct possibility. You also have World Cup qualifying starting up in the fall. Argentina Argentina is definitely going to qualify. He could probably skip some of those games, but I don't think he will because every chance to get on the field now with Argentina, it's a celebration of the World Cup title. They're on top of the world. They've completely flipped the rivalry with Brazil to the point where I'm feeling like I did as a Michigan fan during the Jim Trestle era. And it's uh, so I do wonder <laughs> how many games is he going to play for Argentina this year? How much, how long is he going to be away from Inter Miami? So I think that's a bit of a variable that you have to factor in when we're talking about Inter Miami's prospects this season and Messi. But the other part of this, too, is, you know, I don't know how much stock do we take in the preseason performance from Inter Miami, which was very bad, because pretty quickly you could find Messi, he's not been on a team like that. Let's say they're, they struggle like they did in MLS and they do to begin the season. You know, is he going to be disgruntled? Is he going to? Is it going to become the four former Barcelona guys kind of, you know, huffing and puffing and not really putting as much effort in? So I think it's very important that that team gets off to a good start to have an engaged Messi to create excitement. And look, I, I don't blame Major League Soccer for leaning so heavily into Lionel Messi. This is a, a once in a generation, once once maybe ever type of star and you know it reminds me a little bit of the Jordan era with the NBA in the 90s of where you're just having to rely so much on Michael Jordan to really drive the NBA forward and be that peripheral guy but you know you run the danger of not having any many other stars that are even remotely close to what Lionel Messi is and not even having that possibility because before the, the couple years before Messi came in it was really about okay young DPs young South American talent MLS being kind of this bridge league between South America and Europe. And, you know, that was the celebration. But I do think to compete in American sports landscape, stars sell. You know, that that's the big thing with the NFL. The quarterbacks, Pat Mahomes, Joey Burrow, like big guys, big stars. People can get behind Messi, but who who would you even say is kind of the next biggest star in this league right now? Yeah, I mean, but we just saw the NFL get behind Taylor Swift. Yeah. Okay, so you... you you hook your cart, okay, to, in this case, a rocket ship type of moment. It will be interesting to see what MLS looks like, what Messi, the, the brand and the person, looks like 
if and when reality sets in or, and I'm not, this is not something that I want, but if it does go poorly and the team is not playing well, Inter-Miami is struggling, which certainly could happen. And we're going to get into a little bit about, you know, what people are prognosticating out there. I have yet to see anybody uh, that is showing Inter-Miami. Plenty of people talking about Messi's going to do well, but Inter-Miami as a team, I've yet to see people really say this is going to be an elite team in 2024. I will say, though, parallel to Inter-Miami, Messi, Suarez, et cetera, the young South American thing is still happening. Yeah, I've, yep. I've been is, am- yeah. amazed at the pull that MLS has now in the transfer market. We just covered Comlet Ball's Olympic qualifying tournament. It was littered with MLS players. The fact that a guy like Federico Redondo might be headed to Inter-Miami, and you say, okay, that's Inter-Miami, that's Messi, that's an outlier. He won't... And Argentine, he wants to play with him. But Charlotte are being heavily linked to Luciano Rodriguez, the Uruguayan striker who scored all those goals for Uruguay in this tournament. Uh, that's a big time prospect that's also getting offers from big clubs in Europe. And he's actually considering coming to play in MLS for Charlotte. So I do think it's not like the messy thing is doing being done in such a way that's sacrificing all the progress that was made on the other front. I, I still think MLS continues to increase its pull when it comes to younger South American players. Well, they, they, yeah. they've increased their pull, but they're also shown that they're willing to spend. And that's where the transfer values have been inflated. And I, I think you've seen now a shift in Atlanta United's methodology where they're not necessarily trying to spend the 15, 20 millions. It's the eight, nine, tens because you feel you can get value. But that's where MLS, I, I don't know what Luciano Rodriguez was going to potentially be sold to Europe for, but if MLS is willing to pay 10 and give the guy a million, two million, three million dollar salary, whatever that is for a young DP, European clubs are not paying that at that point. So it becomes a nice way for some of these young South American players to come to MLS to make more money than they would have in Europe and then still have the idea that they want to go to Europe and have the opportunity if they do well. But as we've seen in some of those cases, uh, Barco, Atuesta, they end up going back to South America because it didn't quite go as well or they didn't get the transfer fees that they want. So it's not a perfect you know, formula, I would say, but it's interesting. And I like that MLS want to be players in that market and they're willing to overpay. Although, frankly, having some of those guys fail in MLS is not the worst thing either yeah. because yeah. it shows you that it's a tough league. It's not like a cakewalk. You go there and it's guaranteed you're going to play well and increase your value. So you want more of guys than not to succeed. But having some flops too is actually not the worst thing in the world. Well, look, let's uh, let's put a pin in Messi here. I mean, he he's going to suck oxygen out of the room because of how big he is. he's going to suck. But, no. <laughs> like it's a bold yeah, that's take. Be Even right for there. you, that's yeah. a bold take. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to suck a lot of oxygen out of the room uh, because he's one of the you know greatest players ever to play the game, one of the most famous people on the planet. But I don't think he's going to suck all of the oxygen out of the room. And all of these different stories that we're talking about, I think that you're going to get a platform from which we can talk about and you know maybe a bigger platform than they would have gotten uh, gotten in the past. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.